that'll fog up your lens. All right, I just made a video of uh, splitting a brick. But the camera that I used, uh, the camera froze up and I lost the footage. But what I did was I took this mason chisel and I just tapped it all the way around and scored it on the on the front and sides and bottom all the way around and I just kept scoring it and tapping it and then uh, it cracked cracked loose so what I'm doing is making a concrete block rocket stove and I'm using if you count this one that I broke in half I'm using three bricks and the bottom one down there it's only uh, it's only like a hearth or a base to sit on to. So you could use the ground for a hearth. You could use uh, patio stone, uh, whatever, something flat and uh, fireproof. So I'm gonna dissect it here. There's the brick one that I split in half. Here's another one, the same type. You notice it has like a slot down the middle. Then there's this one, which I broke apart. I broke the center out. First I just took the, the hatchet and started uh, taking little chunks out. I don't hit it too hard because I don't want to break the whole brick up. So I just um, chisel away and chip away at the centerpiece. And then uh, I went and got the mason chisel and flipped it over and started doing the other side. So I've got a solid brick with no centerpiece. Centerpiece is broken out. And that just sits on the hearth. So there's three blocks and one of them is split in half. So I'm going to take this hollow one. It's going to be my first piece sitting on the hearth on the base and then I'm going to take this this unmodified stone so there's I have not done anything to this it's just a regular brick try to line everything up line it up good and uh, same with the holes down through try to line them up as good as possible of course it doesn't have to be perfect but that's pretty good so now now uh a chunk of wood will go down into here let's say and uh, since the very bottom brick is hollow it can go in or out either side this is going to be a little bit different than uh, most of the concrete ones that I've seen before because I'm gonna have a vertical feed so the feed is going to be down a lot of the ones that I've seen, the DIY ones, homemade bricks, brick rocket stoves, they're feeding the sticks in the front, which is okay if they don't fall out or whatever. And if you want to keep feeding them in and pushing them in, that's okay. But this here is a vertical feed, so you put, you put the wood down in vertically. So the bottom brick that's hollow that allows the the fresh air to come in the shallow side and the convection the hot air on the other side will suck suck everything up and the heat will rise and uh, that's that's what makes it work so now I, I take the, the other modified block which is just one that's been split in half and I make sure the mating surfaces are as clean as possible I'm going to put it on there, 
line her all up good. So, uh, down through, down through here on the inside, everything is the same shape on this tall side. Everything's nice and smooth in here. And the seams are sealed up pretty good, like, they're pretty flush and smooth and straight. And the hearth is pretty solid. It's just sitting on the ground, but it's pretty good. So now the tall side is going to be the exhaust, otherwise known as the heat riser. And I'm going to make it one more block taller, higher. So since I split the block in half, I have two pieces and I might as well utilize them. So you can put your your wood and fuel down in the low side here and the, it'll it'll feed down gravity feed it'll burn and incinerate in the bottom and the heat because this side is taller and because it's mostly airtight it'll suck so yeah the heat riser will will cause the convection which makes the rocket which sucks the fresh air in it's like blowing on a on a hot ember or a set of billows. Um, if you blow on fire, give it more oxygen, it'll burn hotter and faster and cleaner. So just the natural, the fact that everything is sealed up pretty good into this J tube, this J shape, uh, it, and the hot air rising up the riser, it has to suck fresh air in from somewhere. And you want real small stuff to get it started. So I've already dropped, I've already got some small slab chunks like this down in there, and I've already got paper down in there. So I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to drop it down the chimney, light it on fire and drop it down, and that'll preheat the riser, and that'll get things, the convection going, started. And then I'll light the other one and put it down here, and it should suck the flame and hopefully get things started. You can hear it rocketing already. You can see some ashes coming out from the paper. You wouldn't, you'd never know it, but it seems to be going. So when I first start this, I started it down the long side. This is actually the exhaust. But it's easier to start because the way heat rises and it's easier to start the fire under the chimney or under the tall side. So from here on out, seems to be going now, it's starting to catch on. So from now on, it's going to be sucking all the cold air, fresh air in here and it's sealed up pretty good. So it'll be spitting the heat out and sucking the cold air in. This, uh, you can see this brick has some, has some sealer on it because it's previously enjoyed from a previous project. Alright, I'm going to get the fire started in this side now. Set the tripod back up if I can here. I can remember how I had it. I'm just gonna feed some fuel into it. I'm gonna try to feed it in on an angle because I want the wood to get to catch fire, and I started the fire over on that side there.
putting the smallest and thinnest pieces in first on an angle but once the fire uh, that bottom brick um, down below this one here so that bottom brick there is hollow inside all the way across there's no divider in it so once the coals and fire get going good down in that bottom hollow I can feed the wood in vertically just in there and uh, it won't matter if the fire is on this side or this side. Once the heat riser is warm, it'll it has to suck up uh, the tall side. That's why I start the fire on the tall side, on the exhaust or chimney side, because once the heat, once it gets warmed up, even if the short side gets warmed up first, it'll the fire will come out that side because heat rises. So you want to make sure and yeah, you want to make sure your heat starts here. Most of the time it'll happen naturally if the fire's in the bottom because the tallest side has, it's like a tube and the heat's trapped in that tube so it has to rise. It sounds like she's rocketing pretty good. There's no smoke. That's the beauty of these things. You, can, you don't even know there's a fire there. There's no light. There's no smoke. It's very, very stealthy. The... Uh, I think these were modeled after the Dakota fire hole. That's one of, or a, the fumivore stove, I think it was. And they're they're like a really stealthy, non-smoky, and you can build these underground. That's what the Dakota fire hole is. You just dig a hole in the ground, and you make the chimney side a little higher, and you have a fire underground. You can cook over top of the, the hole. Uh, it's smokeless. If you do it right, if you got good dry fuel and if you get a good fire going, there's no smoke. And also, the thing about the Dakota fire hole, it's like a mass heater too because you're heating up the ground. If you uh, have a, something like this or if you have a Dakota fire hole and you have a fire for a couple hours, the whole earth will warm up and that's a good place to camp at night or whatever. Which uh, these are associated with mass heaters also. This is a rocket core and the rocket cores are all very similar. Most of them are either J tube or batch tube configuration or but uh, or batch box. But these simple cores, a lot of people use them for barbecuing or cooking or camping or just boiling water off grid or whatever. So looking at this here, it's, you don't see much except for some bricks you hear some snapping you might see a little bit of ash come out every now and then but you don't even know that there's a fire here you can hardly tell let's go let's go look at it oh, my tripod it's a pretty good fire there and it's just getting started to be honest we've got some uh, some bigger chunks of fuel here that I haven't even got to yet. When these are working good, the flames will come at least up halfway up the riser at least. And if that's too tall, if you want to boil water faster or get closer to the to the fire, you can always take this top piece off. I just figured a taller riser would help with more suction and uh, I had to split this one block in half so it gave me two two pieces identical so I figured might as well use them and from here on out now I feed all my fuel in in there just vertical it's gonna take a minute for the fire to stretch across the whole bottom box because I started it over on that side but once it gets, once the coals get stretched out, I'll just be feeding fuel in here, and it'll be sucking it, <laughs> sucking it in this side and spitting it out the other side. Once this gets going a little better, um, I'll be able to put some bigger fuel into it, bigger pieces, and it'll be simple vertical gravity feed. So you won't be having to push them in or feed them in from the front like some of the other ones I've seen. 
Uh, this, I'm more I'm familiar with the vertical feed, and it's very simple. It's gravity. It's you can put a piece in here that's like three feet long, and it's not going to burn off and fall out. It's usually just the bot. It, they only burn on the tip, so they just burn the tip, and they just keep burning down slowly. Depending on the size of your feed port, this feed port is about eight plus eight. It's about sixteen inches from the top here to the base. So there's about 16 inches of depth and your average piece of firewood is cut 16 inches long. So that's almost perfect, I think. A small thing like this is also super, super efficient because it only takes a very small amount of biomass like leaves or twigs or a very small amount of fuel produces a lot of heat up on top. So you 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 don't need big huge chunks of wood and you're better off using small stuff that you can just find on the ground or break off a branch or whatever. Anyway, um, the fuel, the wood and the fuel is now feeding in gravity from the top, and it sucks air in through there. Also, there's a little bit of a venturi because where I broke out the centerpiece, it's like it's not quite broken out all the way. I showed it earlier, but a little bit of a venturi, which is beneficial. And it looks like a little bit of a vortex too wrapping around there. Which might be to do with the way the wood is stacked in and the venturi. Uh, dropping those two down in the chimney seemed to help get the seem to help get the draw or heat up the riser a little bit, but she's going. I could sit and stare at this thing all day. Fire is so hypnotic, so hypnotizing. So if you had a little rack here, which I probably do, you'd, you'd want it to be spaced up a little bit. You could put a kettle on here and cook on here or whatever. If you're too far away, if you're too far away from the heat, or if your flames aren't coming up that tall, you can take remove that top block and you can cook here. But the riser has to be taller, the exhaust has to be taller than the input. So I figured two bricks is a good, it's a good length. So you got a 16 inch depth for your feed tube and then you've got 16 and 16 so you got 32 on the other side which is a good height like for a table or a stove or you know something you, to cook on. If you're going to cook on it it's it's a good height for that. You're not bending over and breaking your back. And it's only three bricks. One, two, three, plus the base. The base can be anything though. It doesn't have to be a brick. It could be a patio stone like this. But anyway, in the city, this might be a little more stealthy. And you might be able to cook on it, burn up the leaves off your lawn or whatever. Another thing about these is they work really good when they're sealed up. So all these cracks and, and joints, if you seal them up with mud or mortar or whatever, um, clay, sand and clay, like a good thick muddy sticky earth, like a good sticky mud, you can you can use that to seal it up and that might make it work better. Well, I put a little bit of mud around a couple of the couple of the joints there, just mud that I dug up out of the earth, some sticky clay type stuff, and uh, she's going rocket ship right now. Friggin' right, she is. Ugh. Hi, Buster. How you doing? There she is. Yep. Oh yeah. 
That'll fog up your lens and then some. So there's enough heat here that, ow, I can hold my hand one, one foot above the riser and it still burns me. And like I said, if you want to go closer to the fire, you take one of those bricks off. Or just uh, get her fueled up real good. You, these like to be, uh, they like to be fat and happy. They like to be choked, put as, like lots of wood in there. And that creates a tighter venturi. So it has to suck hard and that's what blows on the coals. And that's what really makes them rocket. So it seems like the more wood you put in here, the happier it is. The tighter the venturi and the stronger the draw. But you'll notice that there's like super bright, hyper white light in there. But the flames are, are not climbing up, up and out here. They come up and out here instead. Whew. Oh my goodness. Yep. So anyway... The convection and the short side and the long side, it's like the letter J. They call it a J-tube. So this is a J-tube uh, concrete block rocket stove running on scraps. There's a lot of light here, like a lot of bright light and you can see the light from certain angles but there's no fire coming out of this hole you I know that that's kind of physics says that fire should come up and out but thermal thermodynamics says it goes that way and then up so uh, yeah heat rises and there's a heat riser and uh, it's sealed up pretty good so it has to suck in from down here that's why the mud helps because if you seal it up with mortar or mud or whatever uh... yeah it'll draw better but these are just for temporary barbecue for fun for emergency or whatever the hydro goes out and you want a coffee kick your kick your lazy husband outside and tell him to boil you some water on his rocket stove <laughs> yeah there's a lot of interest in these and a lot of videos on these I've noticed these simple concrete ones that you can't put inside like you can't put them indoors because there's no chimney on them or anything but for a backyard barbecue pretty cool this one is different than any other one I've seen with the feeding in the front I like the vertical feed because as they burn they just drop down so 16 you could probably put a 32 inch piece of wood in here and it would just slowly burn down and fall down <laughs> I think that's the beauty of the gravity feed and the vertical feed anywho I don't have any flames shooting out the chimney but I guess that's a little more stealthy. You see the camera fog up real fast as soon as I go over top of this chimney area here because it's so hot. You can't see this. There's no smoke or anything and the flames aren't coming up this high, but it is so hot right here. Even ooh, ouch. Even if I hold my hand 2 feet above that, it's just instant heat. Nothing but heat coming out of there. You know how hot a fire is, like a bonfire, or you can see how much fire there is. There's quite a bit of fire there, and all that heat has to go somewhere, and it's not coming out here, so it's all concentrated, intensified down below, and it burns so clean with all that fresh air and dry fuel and all that turbulence, it's just, even the smoke gets burnt inside, so there's, it's just nothing but good, clean heat. Every now and then you see a fly ashes come out because of the intense draw.
I didn't realize there was a big gap down in the middle there too. Should clog that should clog that gap up in the middle there with mud or something. Seal her up a little better. You hear that? I think she works. I think she likes it better with uh, the double riser stack. It definitely draws better. I can hear it. Draws better when I put that second one on there.